materials can be divided into three different types that is dia para ferro before studying about the properties of this dia para ferro first of all we should know some of the parameters of magnetic materials so in that the first one is intensity of magnetic field so this is due to the letter h so magnetic field strength so this is nothing but the ratio between magnetic field induction to the relative this permeability of free space so what are the units of this one b is measured in tesla this is henry per mu naught is equal to henry per meter or tesla meter per henry or if you want to write this in the term of b is equal to per sol naught mu naught n i by mu naught these two get cancel this is the product of number of transfer unit length into current number of transfer unit length is measured in meter current is ampere so ampere per meter is the si unit for this one the second one intensity of magnetization intensity of magnetization which is represented with the letter i so what is this intensity of magnetization whenever a material is magnetized the magnetic moment developed per unit volume is called intensity of magnetization so what is the si unit and dimension formula for this one the si unit and dimension formula are here we can write this as this is a magnetic moment ampere meter square by volume meter cube these to get cancel ampere per meter and the dimension formula this one ampere meter square is l square by l cube these to get cancel a l minus 1 this can also be written as see the intensity of magnetization is a magnetic moment for unit volume which is equal to magnetic pole strength into length of the bar magnet by what is the volume of the bar magnet area of cross section of the bar magnet into length of the bar magnet this 2l 2l get cancel so i can also be defined as pole strength per unit area so intensity of magnetization is magnetic moment developed for unit volume or pole strength per unit area so this is another formula for intensity of magnetization the next one third one magnetic susceptibility due to the letter chai here the ability of any material to surrender to the magnetic field is simply defined as the magnetic susceptibility so the ability to surrender susceptibility means surrender to the magnetic field is called magnetic susceptibility numerically this chai is equal to i by h so this is the intensity of magnetization developed for the unit or applied magnetizing field so this is the unit this is the formula so from this we can write the si unit and dimension formula so what is the si unit for this one so i is measured in ampere per meter so this is ampere per meter and here h is also measured in ampere per meter so susceptibility has no unit so no si unit it is just a number and it has no dimension formula susceptibility is maximum for ferromagnetic substances so we can write here soft iron which is used to make these magnets artificial magnets has highest susceptibility the fourth one relative permeability
which is denoted as mu r. So it is the ratio between mu r is the ratio between permeability of a given material to the permeability of free space. As it is ratio between two permeabilities, it has no unit and no dimensional formula. So this is the expression for relative permeability of a given bore magnet or given ferromagnet substance. Now, what is the relation between this mu r and uh, chai? A relation between mu r and uh, chai. We know that whenever a material is placed on a magnetic field, so the magnetizing field will convert this uh, ferromagnetic substance into a bar magnet. So what is the net magnetic field induction produced in this one? The B net is given by this is because of the magnetizing field effect as well as the intensity of magnetism that is magnetic moment developed within this one. So we can write this as mu naught times of H that is due to the applied magnetizing force plus uh, some magnetic field will be developed within the magnet which is given by here you can write uh, this can uh, written as plus mu naught I where I is the intensity of magnetization. So now you can write B is equal mu naught into H plus you can write this I as H into chai so this is H into chai so we can write B is equal mu naught H into 1 plus chai but uh, we know that B is equal to in this case H is equal to B by mu naught B is equal to mu naught H but for a given this is only in case of uh, air if the medium is air for a given bore magnet or material B will become mu H only this is mu naught H into 1 plus chai here H and H get cancelled so mu by mu naught this is mu by mu naught is equal 1 plus chai which is equal to mu r because b by mu naught is equal to mu r so this is the relation between susceptibility and the relative permeability that means if you know the chai value you can find the uh, relative permeability of that material or if you know this value you can find the susceptibility now in a problem the susceptibility is given as 4999 what is the relative permeability of this material relative permeability is given by 1 plus chai 1 plus 4999 which is given as 5000 hysteresis the lagging of flux density b behind the magnetizing field in a ferromagnetic substance subject to a cycle of magnetization is called a histars, magnetic hysteresis. Now, let me represent this on a graph here. So, this is the graph that I am going to draw. So, in this graph, I am going to take the magnetizing field induction or magnetizing field along x-axis and the flux density along y-axis. So, from here, if I start this curve, whenever I'm hit, when I am increasing the external magnetic field, generally, if you take a ferromagnetic substance like iron here, and if it is kept inside a current carrying coil in a solenoid, so as the current passes through this one, the field lines are passing through iron. So iron behaves as a bar magnet. So this is called a cycle of magnetization so when you are sending current through this one so h is also equal to we wrote that h is equal to uh, b is equal to mu naught h or h is equal to b by mu naught this is mu naught n i by mu naught in this case here this is equal to h is nothing but a number of turns per unit length into current passing through this whole night so another expression for h is equal to n i from this only we wrote uh, the unit as ampere per meter so if you increase this n value for the same number of turns if you increase n h value increases so if you increase the current slowly the magnetic field within this iron piece gradually increases so the b value will increase here magnetic field induction will increase so this can be denoted in this case so this will be drawn like this and uh, if you see this graph 
it is found that H is directly proportional to B or B is directly proportional to H. So slowly it will increase like this. And uh, here the meaning is when H is increasing, B slowly increases initially. And when H increases, it is almost linear. And then if you increase H, B will not increase. It will get that saturation point. So after that, uh, if you decrease the current here through this one, let us say we are sending from 0 to 8 amperes current passed and then if you reduce the current from 8 to 0 now, so H value will decrease and it is found that slowly the magnetic field in the coil also decreases. So it will come like this. So after that, if you reverse the direction of flow of current, that is instead of sending current, uh, if you send current in this direction, then the reverse magnetizing field, the curve can be seen like this and it will become zero somewhere here. So after that curve will come down and uh, if you decrease the, that means change the direction of the current in this coil once again, decrease the current. So it will come like this. So this is the curve that we are going to get uh, in this case. So the final curve will be somewhere like this. Here also this will be magnetized saturation point. So let me remove this point here, the initial point. Now this is the zero, this is maximum, this is B, C, D, E, F. So now if you neglect this one, first this will undergo like this, then it will change like this, it will come to this point, then it changes its direction. So this is the cycle of magnetization. That means First, uh, we are sending current in one direction, we are increasing the current, then we are decreasing current, we are sending the current in the opposite direction. So, magnetization plus demagnetization, both are taking place, that is called cycle of magnetization. And from this curve, we can learn so many points here. So, what is this 0 to A? So, 0 to A, this is the maximum magnetizing field applied on that magnetic material. So, 0 to A is maximum H value that we applied on that iron piece. After that, when we are sending the, decreasing the current here, the H value will decrease. But when H becomes 0, this is H value, uh, 1 ampere meter, 2 ampere per meter, 3 ampere meter like this. But here H becomes 0, but B is not become 0. So, this is the magnetic properties that are retained by the iron piece when H becomes 0. That means when you are not sending any current, first you send some current 0 to 8 and then you decrease from 8 to 0. When the current becomes 0, H will become 0 because H is equal to Ni. When I is equal to 0, H will become 0. But this iron piece retains its magnetic properties, some of the retained properties. So this is called, OB is called retentivity. Good magnetic materials like this ferromagnetic like iron nickel they retain these properties for a long time so this is the important point that we have to remember so retentivity is too high for permanent magnets like soft iron for permanent magnets retentivity is too high so after that you can see this point c where b becomes zero this is b 1 tesla, 2 tesla, 3 tesla, B becomes 0 at a negative value of H. So this OC is called coercivity. So what is this coercivity? The reverse magnetizing field, reverse magnetizing field required to make B 0. So for the B becomes 0, we need to apply some negative magnetic intensity so that value is called a coercivity uh, this is also maximum for this one permanent magnets so after that it will become zero and this is the hysteresis loop generally if you take this uh, soft iron and steel for soft iron the curve is very slim like this whereas for steel curve is this is for steel and this is for soft iron so whenever the area of the curve is more hysteresis loss is more that means uh, the iron piece or this uh, material which is used here here steel piece so it loses heat uh, in the form of uh, it loses energy in the form of heat so heat loss is more that is also called hysteresis loss is more for steel whereas hysteresis loss which is given by the area of this uh, hysteresis curve is less for soft iron
the intensity of magnetization in a paramagnetic substance is also proportional to its temperature. So I is equal to some constant C by T here. So we know what is this intensity of magnetization. The magnetic moment developer for a unit volume. So in this case we can write here you can see I is nothing but chi into H. So this can also be written as chi into H is equal to C by T. So susceptibility also inversely proportional to the absolute temperature here. So both intensity as well as this one are directly proportional to inversely proportional to absolute temperature. As chi is equal to mu r plus 1, so we can write it also mu r also inversely proportional to this value or mu inversely proportional to this. That means the susceptibility as well as permeability of a paramagnetic substance is inversely proportional to its absolute temperature. Inversely proportional to absolute temperature. So by using this one, that means what is the meaning of this one? Whenever a paramagnetic substance is heated, that means when the temperature increases, its a permeability, that is ability to permit these magnetic field lines through this one or the ability to surrender the magnetic field will decrease. That means generally when temperature increases, it loses this susceptibility. That means it cannot be converted that much easily into a magnet and also its permeability also decreases. Whereas this is in case of a paramagnetic substance. So what about the ferromagnetic substance? If you take ferromagnetic substance, in case of ferromagnetic substance, if you increase the temperature for this one, if temperature increases, so then generally ferromagnetic substance converts into paramagnetic substance. So for paramagnetic substance, this permeability, susceptibility not only depends upon the material, it also depends on temperature. So the temperature at which ferromagnetic substance converts into paramagnetic substance is called a Curie temperature. Then it is Tc. So what is Tc here? Temperature at which ferromagnetic substance converts into paramagnetic substance. Ferromagnetic substance converts into paramagnetic substance. So here also the susceptibility or intensity of magnetization is inversely proportional to the temperature but this formula slightly changes here. This is the temperature of the material and this is the Curie temperature. So or you can write susceptibility is equal to some constant T minus Tc. This constant may be Kc or something. So this is uh, applied only for ferromagnetic substances.